Hello and welcome back to the David67 Celtic News Channel. Going to do a wee preview of the Celtic Kilmarnock match tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Very vital fixture for Celtic. Um, keep ourselves at the top of the table and try and extend that lead and goals difference over our big rivals who play the next day. Before we get going with the wee video today, just a quick reminder for all those new to the channel, please do click that subscribe button and get the subscriber button, uh, subscriber numbers going back up again. That would be wonderful for me, make me um, happy at quite a sad time of year for me for a variety of reasons. And so clicking that subscriber button would really cheer me up no end. Also, for those who enjoy the video, please do consider clicking that like button. And also, uh, as always, uh, comment section uh, open for all those who want to pop in their own opinions, thoughts, theories, etc. regarding Celtic, regarding this video and general Celtic um, issues. And I'll get back to you as quick as I can in the comment section, replies or in future videos. So, as I said, um, today's video is going to be primarily a preview of Celtic's uh, vital game against Kilmarnock. Uh, Kilmarnock have beaten us twice this season, um, and so we'll be aiming for a repeat instead of our great 3-1 victory on the 7th of October last year. Uh, that came four months ago. It was a good game for Celtic. Uh, three very good quality goals from Luis Palma, um, Rio Hitati and Greg Taylor. Good news is Greg Taylor back fully in training and will be uh, in the squad and so presumably in the team tomorrow at left back. And I, I for one, am very happy to see him back. I do uh, fully agree we do need a new upgrade left back at the club for the 24-25 season and uh, for that reason I have put forward a few um, scouting reel videos such as the one for Leif Davis ye yesterday looking at left back options and there are a few left back scouting videos scattered about the, the channel in the last few months. So good news for Celtic at Taylor's back fully fit um, I think Burnaby um, has been quite dodgy. We've been lucky to get away um, with his uh, lower ability to defend. Uh, indeed, I think in the last couple of games, we've not really been using Burnaby as a defender. He's been pushing much forward into that fullback, into the inverted fullback role, midfield role, and he hasn't actually been doing an awful lot of good quality defending. And so uh, I think it is, given the fact that um, Kilmarnock can possess quite a threat down uh, the wings, I think having a better quality of fullback is important. Um, and I think given the way that Celtic are likely to set up tomorrow, I think Taylor and Ralston can afford to hang back a wee bit rather than over committing into the final third. And also, we should have a wee bit more pace in central defence. Uh, now that Nat Phillips has been banished back to Liverpool, then Cardiff, uh, as is likely we'll have uh, Stephen Welsh or Navrocki beside Scales in central defence. Um, and while Scales isn't the fastest, Navrocki and um, particularly Scales have that bit more pace. My favourite... Um, Gustav Lagebielka, although he seems happy in training currently from the pictures this morning on the Celtic FC site. I doubt he's going to see any game time. And I think CCV is another week or two away from being back in the team. Um, and uh, no updates uh, currently on the return date for Hitati or Alistair Johnston, although uh, Rogers may cover that a wee bit in a press conference later today. So just looking at some of the stats for Celtic against 
Kilmarnock. Last time we played them at Celtic Park, as I said, we won 3 1 four months ago. And we actually have an incredible record at Celtic Park against uh, Kilmarnock. Uh, in the last 82 matches against Kilmarnock at Celtic Park, we've got 64 wins, 17 draws, and only one loss in those 82. Um, last Celtic Park games against Kilmarnock and uh, Kilmarnock haven't uh, won at Celtic Park since October 2012 so a good 11 and a half years since they won at Celtic Park and we certainly need to keep that uh, um, record going uh, on and on and on. We do actually go into the game with uh, a good uh, record Seven wins, one draw out our last eight games, although the performances have been um, um, more cheap fizzy wine rather than champagne um, performances. However, um, I think the performances uh, have got a wee bit better and a wee bit better. And I'm looking for a good performance tomorrow, and I think we'll need, need it to beat Kilmarnock, who are an informed side. In their last nine matches, five wins, three draws, one loss, with that loss being against our big rivals just at the turn of the year. So lots of positives going into this game. I uh, expect uh, a result very similar to the last time we played them at Celtic Park, something like 3-0, 3-1, and that will certainly hopefully boost the goal difference a wee bit and get the three-point gap back in place at least for 24 hours or so. In terms of a starting lineup, um, uh, Joe Hart in goals, Anthony Ralston at right back, Welsh and Scales in uh, centre backs with Greg Taylor on the left. At left back, uh, I think in midfield, I think we'll go again with McGregor and O'Reilly as our midfield two with uh, Kyogo in that floating attacking midfield, her deep lying forward role that works so well against St Mirren. Uh, out wide, Dyson Maida on the right and Luis Palma on the left. I think those two are going to be important dropping back into midfield or dropping, dropping back uh, in Maida's case to the full back uh, area if uh, the full backs do venture forward. And I think uh, playing up front um, in front of Kyogo will be Adam Ida again. Um, I think Ida's um, greater physique and strength and height uh, will be a useful tool against Kilmarnock uh, tomorrow. And the key will be uh, getting the ball up to Ida, um, either for him to shoot or head for goal or for him to hold up and bring Kyogo, O'Reilly, Palma and Maida into the play. Also going to be quite good in that we'll have, we'll have some uh, strong players coming off the bench potentially who may have an ability to change the game. Players such as Yang and um, O, uh, Tiago Holm, Paolo Bernardo, um, Louis, um, Lee Labada was back in training. No real mention thus far from Celtic as to how Lee Labada is mentally. Um, but I think if he is um, back uh, near his normal, I think he would be better on the bench rather than Kuhn, although I suspect uh, Kuhn will be given uh, another go off the bench to turn around a fairly disappointing start to his Celtic career with only really a few good uh, um, moments in the game against Aberdeen and has otherwise been very disappointing in his other starts and sub-appearances. Just one wee thing before we finish off today's video, just a wee update on the Joe Hart uh, um, poll question. I popped into the community section a couple of days ago. The question was with Joe Hart's contract finishing in May 2024, what did we feel that as a channel uh, 
um, with regards to renewing his contract for one year, two years, three years, or um, not uh, renewing his contract and letting him leave the club, uh, club as a free agent after the end of May. Just we update on the vote so far. 50% of us have gone for a one-year extension, which is probably what I would go for myself. 10% a two-year extension, 4% uh, going for a three-year extension, and uh, 36% of us are going to go for uh, saying no new contract and letting Hart go. And, and I think at that point it would also be probably Scott Bain going and Benjamin Seagrace going. Um, it, uh, both Hart and Bain's contracts end at the end of this of May, at the end of this season. And so it looks like it'll be a total clear out of all goalkeepers unless we give Joe Hart an extension for a year or so, um, which for me would be as a backup to a new young goalkeeper in the ages of 24 to 30. There are, as I said previously, quite a few different um, top quality international goalkeepers at the ends of their contracts. Um, in a variety of the big leagues in Europe, um, plus there are a couple of um, other international goalkeepers who by the summer of 2024 will be into the last year of their contract, uh, top of that list being Angus Gunn, the current Scotland number one, whose contract at Norwich will be up uh, in the summer of 25, and I think he would be a very good option for Celtic, although there are quite a number and there are quite a number of very exciting young goalkeepers um, all around Europe who would be uh, great additions to the Celtic uh, team. So let's finish things off at that point there uh, and my current plan is to do a post-game review uh, around five six uh, tomorrow evening get that up for early evening on YouTube um, and so for today, thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Do uh, think about clicking the like, like and subscribe button, cheer me up on a miserable February day. And so good luck Celtic tomorrow against Kilmarnock. Uh, goodbye and hail, hail. <laughs>